in the woods Okay guys, this bucket right here, I'm gonna pour the water off of it. You can see inside, that's pure Ohio clay right there. All right, it's real pasty. You can feel it in your hand, how pasty that is. That's how you know it's clay. It's a little bit sticky and it's pasty. Now that's right out of the bank beside the road, about eight miles from here, just by the shovel full. What you have to do with that is you have to drain the water off of it and then you have to let it dry out Okay, so here's two buckets. This bucket Has a piece of dried clay in the bottom of it. And this is where I've taken some clay drained all the water off of it Put a chunk of it in the bottom of this bucket about that thick and just let it dry out in the Sun That clay is ready to work with This clay here is clay that's been worked down a little bit and had some water and temper mixed in it We'll talk about that in a little bit, but I want to show you how to process this clay first Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a piece of screen and put it over the top of this empty bucket. Granted, you're not going to have a piece of screen probably in the wild, so you're going to have to do the best you can to screen out any impurities. And what I mean by that is small rocks, bigger pieces of grit or wood, grass, leaves, things like that need to come out of this so that it's nothing left but pure clay when you're done. So what we'll do is we'll just pour this on top of the screen just like this and then we'll sift it and you can see what we're left with is the bigger bits and that's the part we're going to toss and what we have in the bottom should be good workable clay so we're going to have to take and do this a couple times and what I'll do is I will take a piece of my dried clay that I've got and I'll break it off, put it in the bottom of the bucket, and then I'll just smash it up real good with a stick, that big log, and I'll just continue to mash it until I think I've got all the lumps out of it, and then I'll screen it. And I could even dump the screen back in this bucket for another go, just to make sure that I'm using all the clay. And again, I'm just going to shake it in. And what's left on top should mostly be rocks at that point. So I'll get rid of that. And repeat the process until I have all the dried clay that I have processed. Okay. So what I'm left with in the bottom of my bucket when I'm done doing that is nothing but the pure clay and that's what I want to work with. Now to that we have to add temper and we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, let's talk about temper for a minute. Temper is basically a binding agent that you add to the sand to help it bind together. And in this case, we're just going to use creek sand. We're going to use the same methodology of trying to screen it off if we can. Make sure there's no big bits of anything in there. Then we're going to mix that with our clay and with water. Tempering agents were used, you know, anything from broken shells, crushed shells. There are lots of historical documentation of them using shells and crushing them up. Even in Reverend Joseph Dodger's writings about the frontier, he talked about the natives, the ancient natives mixing clay with shell and firing pots that they could cook in. So there's historical documentation of them using shells. I'm going to use sand. It's the closest thing that I can find to a good temper. They say you can use ashes. They say you can use plant parts. They say that you can use lots of things for temper as a binding agent. We're going to use sand in this case. So I've got my bucket here filled with sand. I'll make sure that there's no rocks in that. I think there's just a few pieces of little clay in there. I'll make sure there's no sticks of any kind in it. And that's what we're going to mix with our clay. So we're going to pour our clay directly into that, just like this. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix that mixture up real good. 
by hand. That sand's a little bit damp. That's not going to hurt anything as long as we get it all mixed in real good. I would prefer it to be dry, but it's been raining here, so dry sand's not going to happen. And while you're doing this, you can look to make sure there's no impurities in there. Keep your eyes out for small particles or bits of anything and just pull them out. Right now, I'd just be looking for things like that, pieces of plant that I might have missed. Those would be the things that I'd be looking for. Okay. All right, that's mixed up pretty good. Don't see any more bad stuff in there. I can turn that thing a few times. Oop, there's one right there. I can turn that thing a few times, almost like I'm winnowing seeds to look inside there and see if there's any impurities in there that I don't want. I can just do it just like that. Okay, guys, so here we are back in the TP. We've got our substrate or a clay mixture right here that's got the temper already in it now what we need to do is we need to add water and i'm going to do that very slowly i've got a mixing stick that i'm going to use i'm going to add water to this mixture slowly because i want a certain consistency of this clay and we'll talk about that as we go so stay with me okay let's take our billy can here and just dump a little bit of creek water in here like i said i'm trying to go fairly slow with this i've got a mixing stick here off the ground that actually has a bullet mold in it so it'll be a good multi-purpose item and let's mix this water and the sand together here and see what we come up with I'm adding water to this slowly because if I get it too wet then I'm gonna have to let the stuff dry out again or I'd have to add more material to it more temper or more clay and right now I don't have any more clay that's ready to go. This is what I have to work with. So I'm being real careful and studious about what I'm doing here. I know there's not enough in here yet, but I don't wanna go too fast, so I'm gonna mix it all up real, real good before I add more. And we'll probably get to the point where we're doing this with our hands shortly. Any of these primitive skills just take time. That's all, that's all it is. It's about taking your time and experimenting and doing it over and over again. And you're going to make mistakes and have to correct those mistakes. And that's how you learn. You know, making mistakes is how you learn, period. That's what dirt time is all about. Is experimenting with different things that you think are going to work or that somebody's told you is going to work or that you've seen to work. And maybe it'll work for you and maybe it won't. If it doesn't work for you, then you figure out a way to make it work for you. And that's how you gain wisdom in bushcraft and wilderness self-reliance. You get my other hand in here. Get some of the stuff in my hands here and see what we got going on. And if I wet my hands, I'm just going to add more water to this. And I don't want to do that either. So you could make coils out of this stuff and then successively stack the coils on top of each other to form your pot or you can just take another pot and you can basically wrap it over the top of it with like a piece of cloth in between and I think that's where a lot of nesting pots that were made of clay came from to begin with I think they would use one pot as a form or a mold to make another one okay so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to start off with something real simple just a grease lamp not anything elaborate because I'm testing this clay to see how it's going to work out So now I'm just forming the rest of my edges and all I did was take a clump and flap it down and start forming it and now I'm just gonna let it sit in the Sun here for a little while and dry and see how it does I'm just getting all my edges nice and solid I don't want anything to be too thin. Thinner edges seem to break real easy when you're firing stuff. So I want everything fairly consistent.
Okay guys, so what we're going to do this morning is we've got our would-be oil lamp here made out of clay and we dried it out in the sun. It rained hard last night. Sun was out again this morning. I brought it into the TP last night, set it out again this morning. It's about 10.30ish, something like that. The sun's been out all morning. It's pretty dry and I've been kind of slow heating it on this piece of grating that I got. Um, that I had over by the wiki and I've been kind of slow heating it over a fire just to get it good and dry and make sure that it's not going to blow up or anything from being wet before I fire it and that's important. Now I have built a small fire in my fire pit and I'm going to set this thing down right on top of that and I'm going to show you what I got going on here because I'm going to try a couple different things here. Okay, hopefully you guys can see what I got going here. You can see I got flames rising up underneath that. Now, my goal is to build somewhat of a oven here by putting a couple fire bricks on top of this. The problem that I see I'm having right now is I've got this knot right here that's kind of making things off kilter a little bit. Maybe I can scoot that to the front. Scoot this brick over a little bit, slide that to the front. Then what I want to try to do is I want to try to kind of build an oven around that out of this fire brick, if that's possible, to kind of hold some of that heat in. The heat's going to rise. So my goal is to get that heat to rise up into this like an oven. And I'm using like a Dakota fire hole. To fire this. So I'm just kind of utilizing the fire brick that I've already got here and trying to hold the heat in like that. And that should give me surrounding flame. I'll kind of get a shot of that down lower if I can for you while it's firing. And we'll just continually add sticks to this Dakota fire hole until we get this thing fired. Okay guys, we uh, burnt wood in this makeshift kiln for a good hour and a half, maybe a little longer, maybe two hours. Um, constantly hitting the bellows to keep that fire raging in there. I was actually, I've let it cool down a little bit, it's still really, really, really hot. But I was actually removing the upper parts of the kiln to let the pot air out a little bit, or let the, I'm sorry, let the uh, grease lamp air out a little bit and actually one of the bricks fell over onto the grease lamp it did not break that's a telltale sign right there that this thing is in good shape because i've seen it not take much more than a stick to fall on a pot that was in the fire to break it and a brick actually fell on this one and it didn't break so i'm pretty happy with that i'll show you guys what we got right now let me see if i can adjust this camera down you should be able to see that pretty well that's what we've got now. Like I said, there's a lot of heat still coming off of this fire. I'd like to get that off of there. Um, I don't want to rush the process too much, but the idea was to make something that would hold oil or grease to make a lamp out of. So I want to go ahead and get that done. Um, I'm going to try to pick this thing up with a couple of sticks and get it off of this fire and get it to a point where it'll cool down and we can work with it. So hang tight with me. Okay, I picked this thing up with a couple of sticks off of that grate. Looks like it's teetering a little bit now, but I just picked it up just like that and brought it over here onto this board to cool down. Now I can at least work with it and see what we've got. Like I said, my plan was to make a lamp out of this thing. I've got some pure olive oil here. I'm going to try to pour in here. 
and permeate this thing and see. First of all, I want to see if it's even going to hold this oil or if it's going to leak. Because that will tell me if I need to seal it or not. So let's see if it's going to hold this oil first. And keep our eyes on that for a few minutes. And keep our eyes on this board to see if it's going to leak any oil. And then we can work with it a little bit more. Okay guys, so you can see a little bit of saturation here along the edges, and I would expect that to happen. Uh, clay is a porous material, so it's probably going to soak some of this oil up. That's not a big deal. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't going to leak anything around the outside or through the bottom. And it looks right now like it's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of cattail that I'm going to use for a wick in this thing. Let's let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes, make sure it's not going to leak, and then we'll see if we can fire it up. Okay guys, like I said, I would have expected a little bit of saturation around here, no problem. Like I said, I just want to make sure it's not going to leak out the bottom. It's getting fairly cool to the touch now. Not cool enough to just pick it up and handle it, but it is cooled down. Like I said, I'm rushing the process a little bit to get this on film. I've got a piece of cattail here, and all I'm going to do is break a piece of this cattail down off of here and punk it up in my hand. Let me zoom this camera out. And I'm going to just punk it up in my hand. I don't need a big, real big chunk of it, I don't think. And I'm going to put it right at the mouth here. Kind of saturate it up a little bit. That oil is getting really, really hot inside that container. But that will wick real well. Now I'm just kind of scooting all of that wicking material up into a ball here. Up to the front where it belongs just like this now we've soaked up a lot of that oil in that wick so at this point we can refill this thing a little bit if we want to put a little more oil in there and this could be tallow it could be olive oil anything that will burn and we can use any kind of wicking material really too it doesn't have to be necessarily cattail punk it could be anything we're just using cattail punk because it works real well and I know it works good. And it's readily available. Okay, now. Let's zoom in on this thing a little bit. See what we got going on here. You guys can see that better. Okay guys, so Here's our oil lamp in action. It's wicked up real good now into that cattail material and the oil is burning. Like I said, this is olive oil inside here. You could put tallow or anything else for fuel in there. Olive oil just seems to burn really clean and works good. Cattail makes a great wicking material and it's all around you. Nice little primitive project that you can do with your kids. Like I said, this is just Ohio clay and sand that's been fired, formed and fired. And I just wanted to see how well that sand was going to work out before I tried on some complicated project. And an oil lamp is a very useful thing at night when you don't want to burn a fire in the summertime. Okay, guys. Well, I appreciate you joining me for another Diary of the TP on making a grease lamp from Ohio Clay here. Or an oil lamp. Whichever you choose to use in it. They both will work. Um, I thank you for everything that you do for me, for my family, for my business. I thank you very much for your support and for your views and for the time that you take to watch my videos um, on almost a daily basis. I really appreciate that. I can't tell you how much that means to me, the feedback that I get on my videos. So with that said, I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. And I appreciate everything that you guys do for me.